And we've been talking about pipelines for the last couple of videos. We've even created a new pipeline element. I'd like to give you a little bit more extensive example of creating a pipeline element. And that uh, example is focused on computing derivatives uh, within uh, columns in a data frame object. So the, the, the math here is relatively straightforward. Each column in say the infant data uh, data frame uh, it corresponds to a, a time series. Uh, so that time series, we'll just call that uh, X. So that's a, a vector at this point. We're going to approximate our derivative uh, by taking the difference between subsequent samples. So we'll estimate the derivative at time T as a func by uh, computing a difference between the value at the next time step and the current time step and then divide that by whatever time period has uh, transpired between the samples. When we're doing these kinds of things in, in the real world, we're, we do tend to uh, also do some, a bit of filtering because computing derivatives in this way can, uh, can uh, amplify noise. Uh, typically in my lab, the approach is to filter the positional data first so we might throw a Butterworth filter at the data if we're dealing with human uh, type uh, data. Uh, so we'll, we'll filter the position data first and then the derivatives, however many we need, the velocity, the acceleration, uh, those derivatives will uh, naturally uh, be smoothed already. But we're not gonna do that for this particular example. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to our uh, coding environment and we'll develop this uh, compute derivative class. Okay, so we're, we're still in the environment that we have been al already been working in. Uh, so we already have our infant data loaded up. Let's go ahead and uh, compute, uh, create a compute derivative class. So this starts out in the same way. It's going to be uh, a child of both the best base estimator and the transformer mixer mix in. And the constructor starts out the same, but we're going to add a few parameters to it. So of course we have self. We're going to take as input a list of attributes that we want to compute the derivatives for. And then we're also going to have uh, dt which I'll give a default value of one second. And, uh, and the approach is going to be, we, we start with a, a data frame and we're going to make a copy of that data frame. And then to this copy, we're going to be adding additional columns, each one column each for, for the derivatives. And uh, one question is how do we name those columns? And what we're going to do is add a prefix to indicate that these are derivatives. So that's specified by default, it's going to be uh, D underscore. So for the constructor, we'll just uh, remember all of these parameters. Okay, and that's it. Since there is no real fitting here, again, we're going to have a, a null fit method. And the interesting work happens in the transform method. So that takes us input as always, uh, some data set, in our case, we're going to assume that it's a data frame. And the first thing we'll do is make a copy. And actually, let's remind ourselves that this is supposed to be a data frame. So I'm going to add a little bit of documentation. When, when you're doing multi-line documentation in Python, you preface it with three quotes. And, uh, and then uh, at the end, you also add three quotes. In the case of Jupyter, once you put in three quotes, it'll give you the other three automatically. You can make uh, copies of objects with the copy method. So X here, it is 
a Python object of some form and the dot copy uh, operation makes a, a deep copy of, of the object X and assigns that new object to, uh, to this variable here. So, so now we've made our copy and now let's proceed to iterate through the set of attributes and we'll compute the derivative for each one of those. So there's our iterator there. And for each one, the strategy is going to be, uh, we're going to pull out uh, the, a NumPy array that corresponds to the, the column. Values. Okay, that gives us our NumPy array. And then we're going to compute our difference. Let me type this and then I'll explain what's going on. So, uh, so if uh, values, so values here is, is a 1D uh, NumPy array of length, some length n. This values here says take uh, elements one to the end. So, so this thing here gives us a, a NumPy array of length n minus one. This thing here uh, gives us the elements zero to all but the last one. So that's what the negative one index uh, gives us. So this is also a, of length n minus one. And by doing a, subtra a subtraction, we're, we're subtracting the corresponding elements. So so the first one we get is element one minus element zero. And then the next element is element two minus element one, et cetera. So we're accomplishing uh, exactly what we uh, said in our expression. Let me flip that back up. So, so remember that we're computing the difference between the next element and, and the current element in order to estimate the derivative uh, at time t. So there's our difference. And uh, the next thing we need to do is, is make the NumPy array diff uh, one longer so that it is now of length n, so it's consistent with everything else in the data frame that we're about to insert into. So I'm just going to add a zero onto the end. So np.append uh, allows us to add uh, things to NumPy arrays. In, in this case, it's a vector, so we can add just a scalar element to it. Next, let's compute the name for the new field. And we're going to pull out uh, the prefix and add it to the existing field name. And finally, we're going to insert, so x out sub field, uh, sorry, sub name. So this is addressing a, a particular column in, uh, in our output data frame. This column doesn't exist yet. We're actually going to assign it. And uh, we, can't, we can't assign just a NumPy array. We actually have to uh, assign a series uh, object and it, a series is a is a class. We talked a little bit about it uh, when we first started talking about pandas. Uh, it is a class provided by pandas that represents single dimensional data. So pd dot series is the constructor, and it can take as input a variety of things, including a numpy array. Um, so so this. So diff is a NumPy array of length n already. This is our delta t. We're dividing each element in this array by delta t, which yields itself a, a, a NumPy array. And then that's provided as a parameter into this constructor. And, uh, and then we can assign the, the series to a column within our output data frame. And that is all we need to do within the for loop. 
the last thing we need to do is return return the new data frame that we've created. So notice that, that is one indent level to the left because we want to execute that after the for loop is created, it is complete. Okay, so let's uh, execute that, push that out into Python. That actually worked. And now let's create a list of attributes. Wrist Z, so left wrist X, Y, Z. And let's compute, create our derivative object. When, when we create an instance of this pipeline element, we have to, of course, hand it uh, our list of columns that we're going to care about. And in this case, we know the sampling rate for these data is, uh, is 50 hertz. So that is 0 0.02 seconds. So, so at least in my lab, we, we try to stick with uh, meters, radians, and seconds as much as possible. And let's go ahead and execute that. And then finally, we can uh, make use of this uh, new pipeline el element. So we'll uh, we'll take inf we'll assign this variable infant data six uh, to be the transform here. And now let's try executing that. And indeed, we executed successfully. Uh, okay, so let's look at our data. And now you'll notice that, uh, that we have not just left wrist X, Y, Z, right wrist X, Y, Z, but we now also have D left wrist X, D left wrist Y, D left wrist Z. Uh, in this particular example, you'll notice that we've got not a numbers uh, for uh, rows one and two here. And that is because we had a not a number in row uh, two for the the uh, position component, but but that's okay for for right now. We'll we'll work on that uh, a little bit later. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and plot our results just to convince ourselves that we're doing the right thing. So we're going to extract out uh, the time column, and in particular the values. Uh, we want x. Data six, where we'll extract out left wrist x values, and we'll also get dx here. Uh, uh oh, I just added a whole bunch of stuff to my frame. Let's cut that part out. Let me get back and recover. I'm going to start the cell over again. So if we can uh, cut out uh, back to that point. Okay, so let's go ahead and prepare to do a plot. Let's set uh, T is uh, the time. And in particular, we want the, the values. X will be the uh, X position. And dx will be infant data six. And now it's d left wrist x. OK, let me execute that. There we go. And now let's go ahead and create the, the figure. Uh, 
plot plot and we'll plot uh, x x by time in red and dx in green. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and give that a try. Oops, I forgot a comma there. And I failed to put parens around the tuple. There we go. Okay, so, the, so there's a lot going on there. Actually, the, the length of our plot is a little bit too much to fit on my screen here. There's a lot going on here, so what I'd like to do is uh, focus on a much smaller time period. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm also going to uh, change the height to be a little bit, uh, a little less than what we had. And uh, just like in MATLAB, we can set the X limit. And that takes as input a tuple, which is the range of X values that we're actually going to include in this plot. So I'm going to go from zero to 30 seconds. Seconds is uh, our, our units along the horizontal. So when we uh, execute that, now, now notice we're not quite as high. That was because I changed the figure size. But now we're looking at zero out to 30 seconds here. And uh, in, so in this, so, so remember that green, I haven't added a legend here, but green is our derivative. And notice that it bounces around a lot. And that's, and that's because from one sample to the next, we do have some real noise uh, in there and, and some filtering would address that issue. Um, but you'll notice that any time where the, the red curve increases substantially, we also see a spike in the green curve. So you see that big change right there. Uh, there's, there's a mild change right there, and you can see the, the spike in the green. The, the red drops down uh, at a reasonable rate right there, and you can see it dropping down uh, uh, here below uh, zero. Uh, and then likewise here and here, you, you can see that there are corresponding peaks in, in the green for any of those positive derivatives. Of course, there are still gaps in, in these data and uh, that they exist in the original position curve and they're exacerbated in our derivative uh, estimate. So we'll work on fixing that one uh, next. So, so that's a, a, a quick implementation of a derivative computing pipeline element. 